Tom, thank you for joining me. Um, just to sort of kick things off, I wonder whether you could give me a little bit of insight onto or into uh, your background and then also, you know, what cricket mentoring is as well. Yeah, well, Andy, thanks for having me. Good to reconnect after a number of years. Um, so I'm, a, I'm an Australian, I grew up in Central Australia. Um, I went over to England, played some um, league cricket and made my way into playing county cricket for Middlesex. Um, obviously, that's how we connected. We played some some second eleven cricket together, um, and from that, I, I then have come back and live in Perth in Western Australia now, um, and still play grade cricket here. Um, been playing for for many years now. I'm I'm getting a little bit older and towards the back end of my career, but um, I uh, then started doing some private coaching here in Perth, some some one to one stuff with um, sort of younger batters uh, looking to improve, and and from that, it developed into what is now cricket mentoring which um is uh, a global brand i guess um we we have athletes um in our sort of digital academy and our online programs from all over the world uh and I, I run sessions here in perth but also travel around australia and various parts of the world um throughout the year to, to sort of connect with and, and to help teach as many young cricketers aspiring cricketers as i can so through the through social media um which i know we're going to chat a bit about we uh, we've sort of leveraged um we've used really really well and and sort of I've, I've put a lot of time and effort into and and through that we've now got these these young players all over the place that i go on and try and train mentor and coach so in a nutshell that's pretty much what i do I, I run programs here in perth most of the year but um yeah like i say i'm off to india next month and then i'm over to the uk for for a few months in the english summer so yes yeah, so that's that's sort of how cricket mentoring's come about pretty awesome and, and in terms of you know starting out from a coaching perspective, at what point did you look at the coaching that you were doing and then decide, you know, this is something that I really want to not just grow within Perth, but then also try and take um, across Australia and then also globally as well? What what was the sort of triggering moment where you thought this is what I want to grow? Yeah, good question. So I, I suppose when I first started, like I always I had a, a real passion to help the players I was I was coaching and. It wasn't just um, about giving them a better technique, but I wanted to be a bit of a holistic coach because I knew from my own experiences that it wasn't particularly my technique that held me back, but it was probably more my mindset or my emotional intelligence that didn't allow me to perform at my best. So so when I started coaching the, the young players, I, I really wanted to give them more than just the 45 minutes in the nets and, and take their money and say goodbye, see you next week. And that's... Uh, where that the name mentoring evolved um, later on, but it was probably um, from, so from the start. I really I started coaching privately here in Perth in July 20, 2014, and then in January 2016, I, I started working. I got the, the um, cricket mentoring name registered and started working on my website and officially launched in August 2016. But it was about 18 months before this, from the start of coaching to the start of getting cricket mentoring up and running and. Um, in that time, I was looking for content online. I was looking for articles. I'd print off articles off Crickinfo or cricket.com today and just little things. But I'd also look outside of the cricket space and just think about what other athletes were doing and what other business people were doing. And I was just trying to educate my, my players um, that I was working with in any way I could really. And, and it was a bit of a perfect storm. I was, I was sort of studying. I was doing a uni degree at the time and I was spending a lot of time on social media myself and I was – doing a few different business courses and I was sort of really starting to understand the power and reach of social media. And it, it just made me think, why can't I just start sharing some content? I didn't think there was a whole lot of great cricket coaching content out there um, when I was looking for it. And so I thought, why don't I start to do it? And it, it was not easy at first. I didn't have the, certainly didn't have the courage in front of the camera and, and sort of to share my ideas and opinions that I do now. Um, but yeah, it was about an, an, a two-year period from July 2014 to August 2016 was when I started going online. I launched my website um, and then really started publishing content on, on social media. And how did you, when you sort of kick-started that drive to, to publish content, how were the first few months in in sort of producing the content what what did you find in producing it and then you know what are the sort of early lessons that you learned by by sending it out to the world as well um so initially it was just publishing pictures on instagram um 
and or images I should say and from from there I was, I was I always knew everyone that I was listening to all these experts and online business gurus were all all spoke about consistency one of the keys to being successful in, in online and with content is just being consistent and so from from the start I thought okay I've got to try and do one post a day and from the very start I, I knew that I had to give value it wasn't about trying to sell it wasn't about trying to um, pump myself up I was just trying to give value to the, the consumer the audience and so I would spend right from day one I'd spend an hour hour and a half two hours sometimes either creating an image um, and then writing a caption um, or sometimes if you look back on my very early um, Instagram posts I was drawing sort of things or writing out quotes and then sh like thinking about how I could what caption I could talk about and how I could then give value and that that was what I started with and that's what I still try and do today today there's a little bit more content we use to get engagement we, we use do certain things to um, say what does this batter do well and we comment below and those sort of things but from the very start it was just mostly still images and then it evolved um, into a bit of video content and from there I later down the track which we can get to I started vlogging which meant I, I had a, a library full of content to use um, but very early on it was it was all Instagram um, I did, then went a tiny bit onto YouTube tiny bit onto Facebook but I was trying to sort of get one platform up and running and I thought Instagram was the, the one and but it was about consistency and it was about giving value um, and it, it still is right yeah where we are now yeah no I'd, I'd agree on certainly on the on the value front I think people often miss the mark with with what they're posting and why they think they're posting it and you mentioned sort of always that sort of forward thinking um, or feeling of wanting to make sales and actually you're going to get the sales off providing that value so um, yeah I think that's that's great to hear and in terms of the people yeah, just, just on that just, yeah. just on that sorry to cut you off like I think most people and I've had so many people come to me since they've seen the success of cricket mentoring and they want advice or they or I've seen people come and go and people try and do it but people aren't patient and people aren't in it for the long term they want a short term return they want a short term in ROI on their time invested and when they don't see that they give up and and from my point of view I knew from the very start through being an active consumer of social media and, and sort of avid user I knew that it was going to be a long term game this wasn't about a week or two or three this was about years and I would say all the hours I've put into social media um, in, in the First year or first 18 months, I probably didn't see much of a return, but now it's coming back tenfold. I, I can put stuff online and I can book myself out all over the world. I can go to various places and and and, and do some do various things. So it yeah, it's it's really about like you say, it's just um, putting in that time and effort, not trying to make a quick sale. Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. And you mentioned those people that you sort of did some learning from. Do you have any names that you can? other than yourself that I can pass on or that you can pass on to people that are interested in kind of trying to pump in a little bit more time into the social who is it that inspired you or that you were getting educated from well back then when I was first starting I, I followed a lot of Ty Lopez um, who's an American entrepreneur and um, yeah, he, he was yeah pretty good I thought back then but now Number one, my the guru who I just follow religiously is Gary Vaynerchuk. Gary V, I'm sure you and your audience are all across. I think he he sort of inspired me to start vlogging and sort of documenting, not creating content. And um, oh, like I don't have a whole lot of free time at the moment. I've got a, a four and a half month old daughter, and whenever I'm not creating content or, or doing something physical or for the business, I'm I'm spending time with her. So before that and whenever I get a pocket of time I watch a Gary Vee vlog or I listen to his podcast and and he just what is amazing is he he can he books himself out for hundreds of thousands of dollars a day or an hour or whatever his his are but his messages are all very simple and they're all um, very consistent and he says the same thing over and over and over again too no matter whether it's a a CEO of a big company or whether it's a young R&B star or a, a, a PT or anyone his messages are all the same and, and I just listen to what he says and it's all of then about execution and so 
for me, I, I just think hearing him it sort of always keeps me on track and, and keeps motivating me. To just, I just keep putting out content, keep putting out lots of good sort of quality content that, that then the, the sort of the business will come, the ROI will come. No, yeah, he's uh, he's pretty he's pretty awesome, um, and you you sort of mentioned that through the content and you're starting to see you see the rewards, reap the rewards of you know what you've been doing for for a long period of time now, over around the world too. The the online product that you've got, the Global Academy. Um, at what point did that become, you know, part of your product offering, and was it? impacted by you know the reach that you were having by your social channels as well yeah so initially when i launched um so my my big thing was that when i when i got into this i was working full-time i was studying an accounting degree and i started doing private coaching and it was just something else on the side as an income earner and then i started to really enjoy it get passionate about helping young cricketers um, who were on a similar journey to what i had been um, and then I realized that I didn't want to just be a coach. I didn't want to spend hours and hours throwing balls. And the way to scale what I wanted to do was to, to have online programs and online offerings because I could then reach players from all over the world um, and not have to just be limited by time. A lot of it was to, to be able to work from anywhere and to earn an income without self-trading my time for money. Um, so I, I – from – when I launched the business in August 2016, we had, um, and I had a, a partner in this part of the business with me at the time, we, we launched um, one online program. It was a 12-week mindset training program um, that we just, yeah, that's what we called it. And then it evolved. And we had three people that we'd lined up that we knew to do it. We, we created a price for it and it was all delivered via PDFs and video um, tutorials um, via email and then we evolved that into what was called the peak performance program and then from there once we, and we got it we got bought some software to host it all so it wasn't done by email and then we, we mark started marketing it to our, our audience and our community and we had we ran that for um, about two years and in that in that time we also did some strength and conditioning programs we did some um, other mindset training programs, some batting basic programs, um, and have I still got you? All good? Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, and then from there, I and they were all curriculum based, twelve weeks or four weeks or whatever, and it was a one off payment. And from there, I, I changed the business model a bit and decided um, I parted ways with with that guy, and I I, I decided that. I didn't want to offer the curriculum based programs. I just wanted to offer like a, 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 a subscription based service where we upload videos on a regular basis and you have to pay a monthly subscription to access that content. So I launched that in October last year after a lot of um, sort of after a lot of, I suppose, talk, speaking to our audience and community and, and sort of a lot of work that went into building our members portal. Um, so we've now got a custom made members portal that's on our website um, and we publish two new videos every week for our digital academy and then I've sort of closed down the, the met programs and now we just focus and try and get our, our, our community, the aspiring cricketers, the keen cricketers to, to be a part of our, our digital academy. And I guess that probably moves in a nice segue into your, your video content. It's certainly something that I enjoy watching on a weekly basis as a cricket badger but um, talk to me a little bit around the decision to start vlogging and um, sort of your experiences so far in, in vlogging. Yeah, so I was, um, it was October 2017. So I um, launched the brand August 2016. I, I quit my full-time job July 2017. I was getting enough private coaching and that's where I was earning like income from just one-on-one -on -one private coaching and then the online stuff was just ticking over and it was covering costs of the online software and those things. Um, and then I went over to the UK for six weeks and got married. As I was, it was leading into the cricket season and I'd been consuming a lot of Gary Vee and he was sort of promoting and encouraging people to vlog and, and document what they're doing rather than try and create content. Um, and my, my best mate um, said, oh, why don't you start vlogging? Why don't you just do a vlog and watch this golf vlog? 
and he re encouraged me to watch this golf guy who'd had a vlog and I watched a number of his episodes and it was just about before the start of the cricket season here in Perth and I uh, I thought yeah why not why don't I uh, why don't I give this a crack so yeah I just decided to to start vlogging and documenting what I was doing I had a, a small little tripod and I used my old iPhone um, to start with and then after 40 odd episodes I think I I got um, or maybe it was 60 episodes, I got a better camera and I got some wireless microphones and um, really took it to another level. And I also hired a videographer to help me edit and, and sort of I upgraded my software from iMovie to Final Cut Pro and took it to another level once we had a bit of an audience and people were sort of starting to want more and, and better quality. Um, and now I just today published my 213th episode, um, which is over... 18 months so it's been pretty consistent um probably on average whatever that is three or four episodes a week and it's evolved and over time i've now got a second videographer who helps out with a bit of video content video video editing i do a fair bit myself as well um and like i say i just document what i'm doing i wear microphones when i coach and then from that i, I then share content of, of what i'm doing I, I did a session last week with miles hammond who's a gloucestershire cricketer um, and then just just publish that today. 35 minutes of me coaching him in the nets, or me throwing balls at him and giving some, him some of my thoughts, and put that online. And, and people seem to respond quite well to it. And in terms of the content structure, does that almost act as a bit of a pillar for for the week, both um, your sort of wider content that you're sending out, and also your sort of internal stuff that you've got with your community as well? Is does that sort of main vlog or the the vlog? That you're running on a daily basis or on a weekly basis act as the, the focal point and then you build stuff around it no not really it's just a piece of content they are pieces of content so some weeks i might only do one um because i don't want to show people that i'm sitting at home on the computer for eight hours a day i, I try and try and show what i'm doing interesting stuff or things that people will find valuable um so some weeks it might be just one video that I publish and other weeks I might publish. I think like the last couple of weeks I publish six videos each week which are, go on YouTube and we then share it on our Instagram story, say latest videos up um, and then the next day we've got a new piece um, for our members. That That is available to anyone. We publish it on YouTube, available to anyone in the world for free and then for our members we, we shoot and create specific content on certain things skills that they want to learn about like it might be an off spin grip might be um taking high catches or or throwing technique or diet or leg spin like bowling a wrong end or how to hit inside out over cover those certain things that if people consumed all my vlogs they might be able to find here there and everywhere but in our digital academy we have a video library where it's all tagged and people can watch it certain things so and we publish two of those videos a week so i try and film every couple of weeks get enough content in the bank to sort of then publish that for our members um, and then our members also get access to things like tomorrow morning i'm, I'm recording a, a a podcast episode with chris rogers um, and then after that we're doing a live chat in our facebook members group where people can ask back questions um, so that's yeah some content for, for our members on top of all the free stuff that so basically, we give well, I give away 95% of content for free, and then the last 5% is our sort of major content that people have to pay a small subscription to be a part of. Yeah, yeah, I get you. And in terms of drive driving that content and and the concepts, where does that come from? Is that is that you? Is that from your audience? Is it from somewhere else? Oh, uh, look, it's it's a combination. I try and listen to our audience as much as I can. I try and see what they want. I ask them questions every now and again. Say, what are you wanting? Um, if in terms of like what what they're wanting for our members videos but in terms of my vlogs that's just yeah a bit of a bit of me um, reading the comments and listening to our audience again but also just trying to document what I'm doing and, and think okay what haven't I done recently or I don't want to make it the same every every time I, I don't want to try and keep it a bit different and a bit interesting so I do my best to do that that's awesome and it, let's let's sort of move on to some some advice bits then in terms of you know the the journey you've gone through with cricket mentoring so far what's the sort of the biggest learning that you've you've taken away or the top three learnings that you've taken away since you started the business um very good question 
One is that if you want to do something great or you want to be successful, there's no, um, there's n you can't do it without putting in the work. There's no shortcut. There's no magic pill you can take. I think everything and any sort of success we're getting or um, reward we're getting is through to just hours and hours and hours of work um, and trying to be consistent and give value. So I've already spoken about consistency and giving value. So I think that they're, they're lessons, but first and foremost, if you, if you want to do something that's meaningful, you've got to put in the work. And, um, but something that I sort of is a Gary V thing that I'm now talking a lot about myself is you've, you've got to enjoy the process. Like I've learned to enjoy editing video and watching myself and it gets a bit boring and a bit sort of, yeah, a bit sort of mind numbing at times, but I sort of have learned to enjoy picking out good moments and cutting and things like that. And uh, if I didn't enjoy that, I'd be taking my time and wasting my life doing that sort of thing. Important to really the process. Like it's very rewarding getting messages from people all over the world saying how on them and they're scoring more confident and it's getting able to put stuff on something on Instagram say people want to book me out or here, there and everywhere. But I also enjoy just going into the office or getting up early and replying to a bunch of messages, connecting with people all over the world. I mean, like if, I think it's really important for any entrepreneur, any business person, any any sort of anything you try and enjoy the little things because that is how you spend your time really. There's the glamour is probably 2% of the time and the hard work, the grind is 98% of the time. So I think that's really important. Um, and yeah, I just think, if you genuinely genuinely care about helping others and and you, you show that and you're authentic i think that's really important that's more important than being perfect i don't think there's any, anything no thing is perfection i think if everyone makes mistakes if you own your mistakes and you learn from your mistakes um and you, you just are willing to to be honest and, and give it a crack i think people are, that's what people want yeah that's that's awesome and you know to, to to finish up here and you 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 mentioned earlier on you did you didn't want to just be trading your time for money you, there's a lot of people that i speak to almost on a daily basis who are looking to take products online or looking to sort of set up a a business model where you know i appreciate the word or the term passive income gets used a lot but in terms of your best advice for someone who's looking to take a a product or a service online what what are your sort of your big things that you'd encourage people to do um, if they were looking to take that product or service online? Um, I would say try and understand how you're helping people and try and understand how, like, what is your product or service and how is it, how is, what's, what's unique about it? And it might be that you're a personal trainer, but the unique aspect is that you are the other person that's but you need to sort of think okay why are you different to every other personal trainer or what, what i think you've got to try and and for me with cricket mentoring i focused a lot on mindset and the emotion involved in performance not just the physical skill um and so that, that was my point of difference i suppose and i tried to then be super consistent with my my content creation and my messaging i was always sort of talking about the emotion and feeling so i think being consistent Consistent in your messaging and understanding what is like what is your brand, what is your sort of service or, or what are you about, and what I think it's about trying to build trust as quickly as you can, and you do that through genuinely caring and, and being consistent and creating valuable information that people want. And again, it, it's not about trying to do it for in the short term. It's not about like people want quick returns, but I've sort of said it a few times now, it's, it's not something unless you've, you can't just start selling online if you haven't built trust with an audience and you haven't got people's sort of trust, they're not going to create a transaction with you. So I think it's 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 about finding your niche, as people say, and what's, like in your area, what's your niche, what's your expertise, and then it's about putting out information, putting out content, educating people, and then seeing, okay, what can I offer them? How can I give them more value than I'm asking for a, in return? So if you're asking for hundred of their hundred pounds or hundred dollars, how can you give them more value than 
hundred pounds or a hundred dollars? What's more important to them than that that money in their bank? So if you can if you can find a way to give more value, that's when a transaction is created. So people are still very like in even in this digital age we live in, people are still reluctant to get things online. They think that it's more tangible if it's in person, but that is changing. It's slowly changing, but you've just got to yeah try and I suppose all of those things above is yeah try and win their trust as quickly as you can. Yeah, and I think it's a, it's a super hard one for people, especially I speak to people when they're reluctant to get behind the camera and, and sort of show a bit of personality and show who they are. But ultimately, if you put yourself in the buyer's shoes and you're trying to find someone or you're trying to buy a product, you're not going to buy off someone that you don't know and you don't believe that they've got the knowledge or or the expertise in a certain area, right? So um, it's, yeah, it's, it's great mm. to you may you're seeing off the same hymn sheet on that and um i guess to, to finish up the, the the best place to to finish would be you know where can people come and sort of digest cricket mentoring content where can they find you yeah so our website's um cricketmentoring.com um and then we're cricket mentoring on instagram uh we've got quite a big following on there cricket mentoring on youtube we've got a, a decent um subscriber base on there and then Cricket Mentoring on Facebook and Cricket Mentoring with no G um, on Twitter. And then I'm Tom Scolle on LinkedIn. So people can, if they want to learn more or whatever, they can connect to me on LinkedIn. It's probably a good one. I'm spending a fair bit of time on there at the moment, um, publishing a bit of content and connecting with other sort of um, business people on LinkedIn. I'm trying to sort of get some commercial stuff happening with Cricket Mentoring and some, some partnerships happening. So. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much where people can find out more about what we do and, and consume some of the content we've created. That's awesome. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate that it's uh, getting late in, in Perth. So um, hopefully people find that interesting. And um, yeah, thank you. My pleasure. Cheers, mate.